Hello there, my fluffer schnoots. It's been a little bit since I made something with this type of format, huh? You guys have been busy with Werewolf Ichi, I think, huh? <laughs> We're not talking about werewolf stuff in this one. We're talking about audio equipment. I asked on the YouTube community thing what type of video people tend to prefer, more talking or triggers. I think it pertained to the role plays that I'm doing, but in general I'm kind of interested, and somebody said they'd like to hear more about my audio setup. I did a um, month or so ago now, well, I did a while ago, I talked about my audio set up with my mixers and uh, showed off some cables. But what I have in this one are my guitar pedals and obviously I don't use these for recording ASMR but I play I, I make a lot of music. I play guitar and bass and sing and I really enjoy audio production, which is in part why we're here today. <laughs> Editing and working the audio is, is a challenge. It's hard, and it's fun, and I'm a very audio-oriented person, so I feel like, personally, I'm able to reap the benefits of producing something that sounds awesome, because even I, myself, go back to my old stuff and listen to it because I think it sounds good. So, I want to talk to you guys about my music setup, my guitar rig. And I'll preface this by saying this is not my ideal setup. I am very, very much an amateur. I've only got a handful of pedals. This is my main like delay, delays, and looper, and echo, reverb, and everything, and it is a, um, like an, not an all-in-one, but it has a lot of different effects on it. They're, they're mostly like delay, you can make it sound like a reverb, and there's like slap back and some other stuff. It also has a tone print, which is what this, this flashback pedal is known for, I think. It's by TC Electronic, which is a pretty well-known brand. They make good stuff. I'm not super big into guitar pedals and stuff. I wish I was. I wish I was um, just more into it in general. Like, I should know more about it for how long I've been playing, but I'm only kind of recently beginning to geek out on it. And I wouldn't even call this geeking out, really. But this is a pretty good pedal. I have I got it for my birthday like years ago and I used it primarily for um, echo and delay and a little bit reverb. Um, 2290 is good. Anna's analog tape, tape delay is good. Lo-fi is good. Um, dynamic mod Ping pong, slapback is okay. I don't remember what RVS is. And I use loop the most. That's actually what it's on right now. Tone print, I've, I've never used. Uh, I don't know why... Oops, that was loud. I don't know why this was got for me. Uh, I don't know... Well, what I mean is I don't know if um, the gifter intended it to be used for tone print or if it was just like a cheap delay pedal or whatever but it has a, an interface, a USB interface, so that you can jack into your computer and download or upload or configure the tone print. And what tone print is, by the way, is a pre-configured setup for um, your favorite musicians. So if you want to sound like, um, you know, the edge from like a popular U2 song, maybe he's got some, I don't know if Edge is in there, but um, that's an example of, of a guitarist that uses a lot of effects, and maybe you could try to get some of those with this um, this flashback pedal. But uh, some pedals have a mono, mono and uh, stereo in and out. I only use mono, my setup is very basic. Uh, what else?
else can we talk about with this guy? Let's see, we got level. We've got the delay. This is just the timing. You can make it happen slow, fast. Feedback is the number of times, I think, it, re it repeats or something like that. And then the, the, the top switch is related to feedback, but it's like the, the speed or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mostly use the looper. And I was doing something really cool with the looper yesterday that I'd never done before. It can hold a number of loops in this one pedal. So I was playing something. I was playing some something simple with like two key changes, and I was I was really digging it. I was like jamming, and uh, I I heard this is kind of like my my music making process. Um, I come up with something simple and I start playing it, and I just like zone out and noodle to it for a while until I start to like hear something that that I haven't played yet. So I, I start playing that, and if it sounds good, I'll try to work it into uh, whatever loop is going on. So last night there was like a, a section of the rhythm I was playing that I thought palm muting would sound good, just like this this really low like chukka sound, and, and I put it in there, and it just picked up the loop, but the, the timing was off. I played more measures on the first loop than the second loop, so it, it came in at the wrong time. But it was fun. It's a good pedal. And it's cheap too, I think it's probably like 50 bucks. So, probably my most useful pedal, not to my tone, but to my own just playing, because I use that looper all the time. I'm My favorite thing to do is to play with myself, and this looper lets me do that in the best way. So, next up, and this pedal, is probably the most important to my tone, and that is the compressor pedal. I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning, these are sometimes called stomp boxes. Um, effects pedal, guitar pedal, um, stomp boxes. It's a, a common slang term for these little guys. And this is little. This is a very small, small pedal. I got it in part because it looks cool, it looks 90s, and that's not necessarily my style, but I think it looks cool, and if I'm going to have a pedal, I want it to look good, so I got this one. So a compressor is, a compression pedal is really, I think it's kind of, um, I don't know, compression has a bit of a mixed, um, uh, mixed feeling for people because too much compression can take the character or color out of music but not enough compression and you have these really low lows with occasional super big peaks and that can be troublesome but the way that I have it I screwed the settings up so I'm gonna have to go back and fix it but the way that I had it was it just brought my lows and it didn't really do anything to my highs it, it's just kind of it didn't squash it but it, it brought up my lows and left my highs mostly where they were and that's important for um, sometimes I, I do finger picking and that's quite a bit quite a bit less quite no more quiet less loud <laughs> it's not quite as loud as when you're when you're strumming with your your powerful powerful chords and things but that's where this comes in handy and it can make your notes last longer too so if you've got kind of a cruddy guitar that doesn't hold a, a note it doesn't fade or it fades, it doesn't, it doesn't vibrate, then a pedal like this can help. It'll, it, it might amplify the um, background noise a bit, but I don't know. There's, there should be some circuitry in there that eliminates that. Everybody's rig is different. I haven't had a problem with white noise, but I could see how you might. DC 9 volt in. I'll show you how I, I get all these daisy chained in there too. Oh, I didn't push the button or anything. Now nah, we'll do that. We'll come back around. Nah, it's just like a weird popping noise. <laughs> you know, a really good way of editing, if you want to maximize your production quality, is to don't do things that require editing. <laughs> don't edit. There you go. There's EG's advice. Don't do things that require editing. T 
PC Electronic again. Oh, I didn't mention the brand for this one. Who is it? Digital Compressor PCS1 by Kugo, True Bypass. And that means that when this isn't on, it just, the signal goes through and it's not affected by the, the circuitry or anything. I got this pedal on Amazon, the compression pedal. I got it on Amazon and uh, I got it because it looked cool, not, not because the brand or anything. It's a compression pedal. I mean, I guess that the circuitry could be like bogus and be all jacked up, but then I'd, <laughs> I'd return and get something better. So I don't know. The way I look at it, it's a compression pedal. But this dark matter distortion pedal, I believe this may have been another gift. And this is where I get all of my distortion in in anything that I've I've played recently in the past maybe two or three years. It's been through this pedal. Well, that's not true. I have a crate amp that has a pretty good dirty channel, but um, I usually play with my Marshall MG15, and uh, the clean channel on that amp sounds awesome. But the the gain, like the the distortion from that amp, is real bad. So I run the clean channel into my compressor. I'll show you how I had them chained up. But the the distortion comes from this dark matter pedal, and I actually don't like it. It's not really my style. I like really hot distortion. I like harmonics. I like noise, and this is way more mid. It it. it would be good for like sludge metal uh it and it's fine you know like it works it sounds different like i've got a super strat and i've got a um i don't know i'll show my guitars off sometime but they're both pretty pretty rocking guitars meant for for hard rock and they sound totally different <laughs> through this through this distortion pedal when this pedal is the only thing driving the distortion but if you're if you're going for it, it doesn't sound bad. It's just not it's not my style. <laughs> I mean, I can I can modify my playing to uh, to work with the type of distortion that it provides. But I mean, it's fine. I've been playing with it for years. I just like something different <laughs> at this point. Anyway, though, it's just a distortion pedal. We got four knobs. There we go. We have gain level bass and treble. We also have a voice switch, which I don't think... Oh, I can reach. Just a nice little switch. I love how basic these boxes are. I mean, you could you could make this. I don't know if you could 3D print it, because, I mean, your stomp... They call them stomp boxes for a reason, you know? You might just, like, crush it. You could, I'm sure you could build enough support, and it'd be fine, but these are all made out of metal. You can't hear it. I'm just gonna like shake the camera to a bit. The light is red when it when it's plugged in and it's rocking and rolling. Um, I usually run the gain at about twelve o'clock, maybe ten, something like that. Um, the the voice seems to change the mud, <laughs> like the level of mud that is coming through your speakers. I don't know how else to describe it. And the bass and treble do just that. It's it's a good pedal. I don't have any complaints. It's just the not quite the style that I'm going for. So on the tail end, we have the dark matter distortion pedal. Oops! Don't do that. Come here, you. Oh, it's gonna slide out of my hand. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm got it right right when it fell in the middle is stuck in the middle of the pedals is the TC electronic flashback so we got pair TC electronic pedals right there and at the beginning of the chain the compressor I I've always had the compressor at the beginning of the chain but I recently looked it up, and that is, in fact, where they recommend it. If you've heard different, or if you have different ideas uh, of
of how to set this up, let me know. I'm interested. That's a fun thing about amateur audio. It's like everybody, everybody has a different set of ears. Everybody hears things different. Everybody has different ideas and things. Like there are some constants, but by and large, it's just subjective. And that's what makes this audio stuff so fun. Once you find people that agree, gel, mesh with your style, it becomes a lot, that much more fun. But the compressor is in the front. I've got... Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I want to show you this. Who is this guy? This is... Yeah, this is the receiver. Okay. So, something that I did to level up my guitar performing ability. <laughs> oh no, come on. I can't get it off. That works, sure. I got this receiver. It's a um uh it's like a wireless receiver for anything that works with quarter inch jacks. So is it quarter? Yeah, I messed that up on a, another video, the last audio video. But the transmitter goes into the guitar and the receiver plugs in. No, Let's see if we can do this without too much drama. Got it. There we go. So this is how my effects loop starts. We have the, the transmitter. No, we have the receiver, which is receiving the signal from the guitar's transmitter. So it's wireless. So I can be as far away from my amp, my effects setup as I, as I want to be. Right now, it's, a, it's on the other side of the room. And I, I don't, I don't want to be tethered to it. You know, I want to be able to walk around. I'm very animated when I play. I'm, I'm jumping and I'm jiving and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. So being hardlined into anything just isn't good. So the first part of my setup is this guy. It goes into the compressor. So the signal comes in and it compresses the signal. So it squashes it or does whatever it needs to. And then from the compressor, I've got these cute little cables, which I'll use some husky magic and plug in. This is pretty good. I'm actually pretty proud of myself that I'm able to do this in a very convincing way. Boom, there you go. Look at that. So I've got this little cable. Goes from the compressor into... Oh, you know what? I am I goofed. This is not how I have it set up. The looper, whoops, is on the end because otherwise it would be looping the signal before it even goes into the distortion pedal, which isn't the end of the world. It would just be like weird. I might try it sometime, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you want to do it. Unless you were going for something specific, like if it created a weird sound and you wanted that sound for your song. But otherwise, I don't know why you would do it that way. If you do, let me know. <laughs> this is becoming like a show and tell. All right, and now we, oh goodness, we go from the distortion pedal into there. The looper. 
I could zoom out too, but I'll just squish these there. <laughs> so when when I'm ready to play, I step up to the amp and well actually I, yeah I step up to the amp, turn the amp on. I have to flip the switch on the receiver, which is off camera, but it's like it's right here. So I gotta turn that on, turn it on my guitar, okay? We stomp you. <laughs> That's not a good, <laughs> it just sounds like a popping sound, but we stomp on the compressor and get that going. And then we stomp on the distortion pedal, assuming that's what I want. And then we just like kinda, kinda jam, see what comes out. And if there's something good that can be looped, find a good place, find a good rhythm, and then that that one sounds a bit different, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Distortion. It's got that popping. Compressor. It's like a higher pitch. Wait a second. Was that just on? What? It doesn't have power. There must be a battery in there. Okay, that's weird. So does this one do it too? No. Huh, okay. I have no idea what that was about. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess while we're on the topic of power, I've got some chords. So each of these takes nine volts, right? So unless you have, uh, you basically need a power supply that has a bunch of plugins. So I've got one that just plugs into the wall or a power strip. Ah. And then it connects to one of these Medusas with a whole bunch of jacks and a filter. So I can plug up to six of these puppies in and get all sorts of cool sounds and effects. But that is about it for my effects stack. Believe it or not, it is really that small. So I was also going to include my my mics because I have a whole array of mics, but um, probably a good idea to make that into a separate thing. So, oh gosh, uh, I didn't mean to hit you. <laughs> I was reaching around and I grabbed the cable and pulled the camera. All right, so this was fun. And I'm really happy that you guys suggested it because it it shows me that you're you're interested in this stuff, and I like talking about stuff that i'm 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 very passionate about music. Music was like my first love music and and music production was kind of my first love before a lot of this stuff, and uh, I didn't really share it and uh, it's it's really cool to be able to share it and talk to, talk about it with you guys. Uh, it's pretty pretty special to be able to do that. I'm I'm very very happy about it. Feel very grateful, very grateful for all of you. I hope that you've enjoyed this one, my lovely fluffer schnutz. And I look forward to coming back at you with the next one which will be about my microphones. Until next time, stay happy, healthy, and E.G., stop hitting the camera. Bye-bye.